Okay, right. Right. <clears throat> True stories can sometimes be the most compelling, and with so many films being based on them, we wanted to find out just how true they really are. I'm Tom. I'm Matt. This is Real or Fake, and in this episode, we're looking at the mining crime drama, Gold. Directed by Stephen Gagan, Gold follows the story of Kenny Wells, played by Matthew McConaughey, who is a prospector looking for a lucky break with his family company, Warshaw Mining, after years of being beat down by the industry. The film takes place in the 1980s and is based on the true story of the 1993 Brex mining scandal. Now, when you think of gold mining, you might think of something that looks a bit like this. When in reality, it's a lot more like this. Gold has fascinated humans for a very long time and has become one of the most valued minerals in the world. During the 19th century, numerous gold rushes in remote regions around the globe caused large migrations of miners and there's one that you've probably already heard of before which is the Californian gold rush of the 1800s. But despite what you may think, Gold production isn't actually less than it used to be. In fact, it's still increasing. And in the 1980s, the United States witnessed a boom in gold production, jumping from less than 50 metric tons at the beginning of the decade to almost 300 metric tons by the end, and production kept on increasing. So it's clear to see why anybody around that time would be pretty keen to get a piece of that golden pie. Now, let's take a look at the main players in our story. Now, for legal and privacy reasons, the main characters and company names were changed in the film, as well as some of their backstories. But first up, we've got Kenny Wells, played by Matthew McConaughey. Kenny Wells is based on a Canadian businessman in the oil, gas and mining industries, who is actually called David Walsh. Kenny Wells' company, the Warshaw Mining Company, was actually called Briex Minerals Limited, and it was part of a group of Canadian companies based in Calgary. The film opens by showing the relationship between Kenny and his father, who is essentially handing him the reins of the family business. In reality, David Walsh founded the real-life Briex Minerals Limited in his basement, along with his wife, Jeanette Walsh. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because that's another thing that deviates from real life, because in the movie, Kenny isn't shown to have a wife. No, he isn't. He's actually, in the film, shown to have a girlfriend called Kay, played by Bryce Dallas Howard. Next up, we've got Mike Acosta, who's played by Edgar Ramirez. Now, he's an interesting one because he's actually a mixture of two real-life people. The character is mainly based on Filipino geologist Michael de Guzman, who is an intelligent man with an engineering degree, but someone that struggled to find recognition in his field. He is also partly based on John Felderhoff, a then well-respected geologist. De Guzman needed another geologist to corroborate his story, so shared news of his find with Felderhoff. Interestingly, it was actually Felderhoff that recommended David Walsh as an investor for de Guzman's mine, and both took Walsh to dinner to convince him to invest $80,000 in their project. Now onto some key points of the plot, and first up we've got the salting of the samples. In the film, we see Acosta mix gold shavings from gold he purchased from local villages in with the core samples to convince the world of his incredible find. Now this actually did happen with the real life Michael de Guzman, but a fascinating detail that's actually left out of the film is that he started off by using shavings from his wedding ring. By the way, he was married in real life and actually had four wives. Plenty of wedding rings at his disposal, I guess. And it's only after he started to run out of gold on his wedding ring that he paid the locals for their river gold. Yeah, and did you know that he got up to $61,000 worth of the stuff over a two and a half year period? So he was pretty committed to this line. Oh, he was committed all right. <laughs> And our next point of interest is the scene where Kenny Wells touches a tiger. So in the film, Kenny Wells has to touch a tiger to prove himself to a potential investor. It was a pretty tense scene, but was a lot more tense to film. <laughs> yeah, I did touch this 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 tiger, and uh, that's that's I'm not acting in this scene. I'm scared. I'm sweating. <laughs> really? Yes. The real life David Walsh never had to touch a tiger to close a deal, but it's a nice little scene that shows the lengths that Kenny is willing to go to in order to make a success of himself. Now onto one of the more gruesome and potentially one of the more fascinating parts of the story, the death of Mike Acosta. Now in the film, we're told by the FBI investigators that he was escorted over the jungle in a military helicopter where he plummeted 1,000 feet to his death and his body had been found half eaten by wild animals. But wasn't it just him and the pilot in real life? Yeah, according to reports that's true and that's why a lot of people seem to think that he had committed suicide because he knew that his whole scheme was about to unravel in front of him. He was also supposedly suffering from a horrible and painful disease and he had also left suicide notes. 
However, there is some evidence to suggest that this was all just an elaborate ruse in order to fake his own death. Yeah, for instance, some experts believe that the injuries found on the body were far too neat for an animal attack, and that the body was just way too unidentifiable to even know if this was Michael de Guzman. Lastly, there's the massive question of what happened to all the money. What you gonna do, Gary? In the film, Michael Acosta is the only one that dumps any stocks before things go south. But in reality, all three of Walsh de Guzman and Felderhoff sold off $100 million of stock options before things went bad. But it was never proven whether or not this meant the other two were in on the scam. At the end, a broke Kenny Wells receives a check from Mike Acosta for $82 million, along with the napkin contract that they had written earlier in the film. However, this is just pure speculation that this ever happened, and it's really just in the film to show that there was a real friendship between David Walsh and Michael de Guzman. But what happened in real life after the events of the film? So, after the scandal of Briex that cost investors an estimated $3 billion was revealed on March the 26th, 1997, None of the three involved were punished. Firstly, de Guzman was dead, and Felderhoff and Walsh denied any knowledge of what was happening. Walsh moved to the Bahamas in 1998 and actually died of a brain aneurysm on June 4th of that same year. Since the scandal, people still believe there is gold in the former Briex area of the Borneo jungle and continue to search for the precious mineral. And hey, who knows? Maybe de Guzman is still alive somewhere, sitting on a beach, sipping a pina colada, Although, he is probably somewhere without an extradition agreement with Canada, you know, just in case. Yeah, just in case. Probably a good idea. Overall, the film doesn't stick too close to the true story of the Briex mining scandal. Some plot points are completely made up, others are changed so much that they're beyond recognition, and some characters that were involved in the scandal aren't even included in the film. And I think those changes and omissions probably make for a better film. I think definitely from a pacing standpoint, from a watchability standpoint, a lot of the stuff that was left out wasn't necessarily needed. And the things that were added did make for some really tense storytelling. Yeah, and at the end of the day, we're not watching a documentary, we're watching a film. And it just shows you what adapting a true story sometimes means in Hollywood. Yeah. So, let us know what you think of this episode of Real or Fake down in the comments below. And in your comment, make sure to put a film that's based on a true story that we can dissect just like this one. And feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Tom. I'm Matt. This is Real or Fake. See you next time. Life is for living. Let's see where this song might